Man know thyself, and thou shalt know the universe and God. Pythagoras, you know, that triangle dude. Today more than ever, the world seems to be in a very disharmonic state. Thanks to modern internet technology, we now have access to all the world's information at our fingertips. And yet the algorithms behind the mainstream tech we all use only shows us what we're accustomed to seeing, creating social divides the likes of which we've never seen before. If we took an outside perspective on our species though, you might say that we've always been disharmonic. And that's kind of true. In fact, if our esoteric history is to be believed, we've been growing more and more disharmonic for about 13,000 years now. It's in our DNA, and it's something that we're passing through as a species together. There is good news though. We're nearing the end of this paradigm, this karmic cycle of disconnection and suffering. And ideally, we will never be here again. At the moment, we're just not in tune with ourselves and our collective consciousness is beginning to realize it. The reason for our disconnection from the soul is actually fairly simple. And no, it's not about politics, greed, capitalism, or any of that stuff. In fact, all of those are simply long-term manifestations of the real problem, which lies on a deeper, much more personal level. The true problem actually lies in our old way of thinking, creating tension on every level, Right now, as you're watching this video, all of us are going through something of a shift. We are changing into a completely new state of being with a new way of thinking and a different understanding of our multiphasic holographic reality. Today, we're going to break down the concept of chakras like you've never seen it before, a deluxe special remake that unifies all of our original episodes into something even greater. If you've been around this channel long enough or have seen like any meditation or spiritual based movie of the last 10 years, you'll probably know that one of the most central and core themes of many new age disciplines is the seven chakra system. Whether you've used them as meditation aids or seen them in gift shops, you're probably at least somewhat familiar with the idea. If not, keep watching or, you know, just watch Dr. Strange and see how it turned out for him. When getting started with the new age concept of chakras, First, we have to understand the basics of light and color. If you take white light and shine it through a prism, the light will break into a spectrum of seven colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Aw oh, yeah, Roy G. Biv. You can do this at home with your own prism, or maybe you tried it in science class at school. We familiarly recognize this as the spectrum of the rainbow, or even more familiar, the basic palette in Photoshop. Scientifically though, this whole prism effect and all of the colors it produces are generally called Newtonian colors. And for the most part are the foundation of the visible color spectrum. Now, of course, there are way more than just seven colors, especially when you get into different wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum and perhaps even different dimensions. But let's just, you know, let's stick with these for now. The thing about color is that each one actually has its own vibration. Red has the longest wavelength and the slowest vibrational frequency. And today we generally recognize it as warm and stimulating. Violet has the shortest wavelength and the fastest frequency, and we recognize it as cool and calming. I don't think I have to describe what happens between these two colors. It's like a frequency change that gets shorter and faster as you move up the spectrum. This basic knowledge, believe it or not, is very important, but we're gonna have to look at some other things first. So what is a chakra? Well, it's usually believed that the word chakra comes from the Sanskrit word meaning wheel which is partly true, but not the whole story. And we'll get to that later on. In our modern understanding though, a chakra is a wheel-like vortex spinning in a circular motion within the body. It forms a vacuum in the center that draws in energy on a vibrational level and can draw in anything from color vibration to thoughts and feelings of other people that we come into contact with. So in essence, chakras are energy points or centers that run vertically from the top of your head down your spine or, you know, from the bottom all the way up. Think of them like pools of energy in our body. When left to their natural state, they will flow seamlessly, but life is messy and stuff like emotions, abuse, and bad experiences get in the way. And much like moss or algae, it blocks the creek from flowing. Ah, you caught me. I'm quoting Airbender on that last bit. Now, despite how you look at it, there are seven, eight, or 13 primary chakras, as well as over hundreds of smaller, minor ones that are scattered throughout the body along certain channels 
known as axiotonal lines. We'll cover the eight and 13 later on though. So for right now, let's stick with the basic seven. As we understand it, your chakras are kind of like the etheric motor of the soul. Not only do your chakras draw in energy, each and every chakra radiates an energy or vibration and governs over a major organ or gland connected to other body parts that resonate at the same frequency. To have balanced and aligned chakras will make you happier, healthier, and more in tune with yourself. When one chakra center is out of sync, it may eventually affect the organs and glands that it's connected to and cause the chakras neighboring it to also go out of sync, causing a chain reaction and many bodily imbalances. A chakra can become out of balance when it is overactive, underactive, or possibly congested or blocked. This is almost always felt on a mental, emotional, or physical level. The benefits to energizing your chakras and learning about them are primarily for our harmony of mind, body, and spirit. Your mind alone cannot nurture your whole being, nor can a proper food diet solve all of your problems. It is through your chakras that you can learn to balance all aspects of yourself, bringing you into a healthier state of consciousness. As we mentioned earlier, each chakra is connected to an organ or gland, which governs over a section of the body. The order of the chakras is generally thought to go from the bottom up, starting with red and changing vibrations in each chakra until you get to violet. However, we've recently discovered that you can explore them the other way, starting with a higher awareness and bringing it down into your body. This is exactly the methodology behind the seven day transformation, a one of a kind course that has seen thousands of people change their lives and share their stories about it. And you can learn more about that by clicking the link in the description. It truly is profound. Now, when you break light apart, you get seven colors. These are the same seven colors that our physical body is tethered to. What would you see if you were to look at a human being through an etheric energy prism? Are we bodies of light? Think about it. Now, not only does each chakra connect to an organ or gland, but each chakra also has a very specific trait. The first chakra is survival and is connected to the adrenal gland. The next one, the sacral, is governed sex or interaction and is connected to the reproductive organs. The third is the solar plexus, power or ego, and connected to the pancreas, and is often cited as being similar to the Sea of Chi mentioned in Taoist alchemical texts like the secret of the golden flower. The fourth is based in love and connects to the thymus and the heart. The fifth, the throat, is expression and connects to the thyroid. The sixth is called the third eye, which is psychic and intuitive and connects to the pituitary gland. And finally, we have the crown chakra, which is the spiritual chakra and connects to the pineal gland. Although this is debated, and some say that the pineal gland is also connected to the third eye and the pituitary gland with the crown. Now, survival, sex, power, love, expression, vision, and spirituality. These are the seven traits through which we grow and are at the core of our being and relate to our existence on a fundamental level. Understanding the system and being present with it can help us find out where we're in or out of balance. Okay, so after all that, we know a fair bit about what chakras are now, yet we haven't even begun to scratch the surface of this topic. Let's talk about opening, activating, and charging your chakras. Do you know of a time when you were struggling with your ego or didn't seem to have a heart or couldn't express yourself in your usual way? If you or anyone you know has a problem or comes off too strong in any of these traits, the reason why could be because of an imbalance within the chakras. As we know, each chakra resonates to a color. Doing something as simple as wearing clothing that matches the color of a chakra can even cause it to resonate. I remember when I was first learning about this, all of my chakras were closed except for my throat, which was way too open. The reason for this was because my bedroom was painted blue as well as my bed sheets. And every night I would get a chakra boost in that one area. And the reason that something like the color of your room would have an effect on chakras is specifically because everything has a vibration and our environment stimulate us to think, feel, and take action just as much as our own thoughts do. If you don't believe us, just check out our episode on the biology of belief. And if that's not good enough, just ask Google why they spent millions upon millions of dollars testing what colors would compel people to use their products and services more and spend more money at the same time. Now, sunlight is of course our main source and provider of light, heat, and energy. Sunlight itself consists of energies in the form of cosmic rays, gamma rays, X-rays, visible light rays, infrared rays, microwaves, and even radio waves. I mean, let's be real. The sun is just basically constantly waving at us. Haha, <laughs> ba-doom-tsh. So straight up, lying in the sun for half an hour 
can give you a powerful energy boost in addition to all of that delicious vitamin D. Mm -mm. Our skin loves that stuff. In fact, the practice of sun gazing during sunset or sunrise when it's actually safe to do is an ancient practice that was said to bring numerous benefits and skyrocket your ascension process that is attested to by many ancient yogis. Generally speaking, even something as simple as eating food that matches the chakra colors is just as good as well. Seriously, it's believed that eating red tomatoes and apples are good for the root chakra. Eating greens are good for the heart. Could blueberries and eggplants open your mind? At least blueberries. You open up an eggplant and it's like, psych solar plexus, fool. Does this make you wanna eat healthier? However, you have to consider what's in the food too. Skittles may seem like it's good for your entire chakra body of consciousness, but they probably break every chakra considering what's in them. But on that note, if you wanna learn more, check out our movie called Healing with Food. Finally, the best way to open your chakras, hands down, is meditation. There are tons of meditations and chakra cleansings out on the web. In fact, we've made one too, and we'll share it with you soon. Sometimes though, it's as easy as just visualizing the chakra in the area that it's in and seeing it open or flood with energy. Buddhist tradition often talks about seeing the chakras as flowers with closed petals and meditating to see them opening and blooming into their full beauty. And finally, another way that you can work with your chakras is through Reiki. See, Reiki masters are people who are sensitive to and trained to work with energy. They learn to move energy throughout their body and connect it and flow it into yours. It's a very amazing process. You may have to ask, but Reiki masters can also typically communicate with your higher self for you and ask you what you need to progress on your path. Reiki itself is growing more and more popular in the last 15 years, so it shouldn't be very hard to find a number of places near you that offer it as a service. If you're serious about this and you don't know where to start, Reiki and meditation are excellent first steps. However, as with everything, be mindful that we don't want to become reliant on external support just to get by. Reiki can be very helpful, just like a plant medicine ceremony, but not so that you can just go and trash your body the next day saying, oh, no worries, I'm just gonna get Reiki again to realign. If you are getting Reiki, do your best to stay aligned after the session, ideally supplementing your own health with proper food, meditation, and even exercise. Medical science has proven that toxins and impurities, including negative thoughts, chemicals in our food, and other pollutants can influence the body. If these are consistent, then chakra imbalances can manifest, which may eventually affect us on mental and physical levels. Traditional healthcare at this time is unable to naturally or totally alleviate symptoms, especially before they happen. And this means it's up to us to improve our health conditions on our own. We can't forget that we need to take care of our whole being, not just the parts that gain symptoms. And with that, I bid you adieu. But don't worry, because we'll be back again soon for even more Chakra Remakes in the Spirit Science Journey.